Hey guys, welcome back. I know I'm super late on this video. <laughs> we got the news of uh, the Resident Evil 3 remake. Uh, probably, what, a week and a half ago? Uh, with the leaked screenshot for the PlayStation Store entry for the pre-order. That's kind of what told me it wasn't a mistake, it wasn't false information, it was... Purposeful or not, it was, uh, I don't think it was officially meant to happen that way. And then lo and behold, not long afterward at the uh, PlayStation reveal, they were pretending to show Project Resistance and then it turned out to be a trailer for Resident Evil 3, which was fucking awesome. I gotta tell you though, uh, part of the reason why this video was late is because I've been living under a rock playing the shit out of Shenmue 3 because that's a game I've been waiting 18 goddamn years for. Not an exaggeration, that's literally how long I've been waiting for that game. Um, it was okay though, I, I know that uh, there are other channels that you go to first for your Resident Evil news, you know, Avid Expert, Residents of Evil, Where's Barry, The Sphere Hunter, those channels are all awesome if you're not watching any of those any of the ones I just mentioned fucking do it because those guys are all great um, but a lot of you found my channel because of my Resident Evil content and a lot of you found it because of my fixed camera angle video so I would be remiss if I didn't give you my own you know points of view on the matter also um, I also wanted to see what they were saying those other channels because I don't like to cover the same news that everyone else covers. I, I like to only contribute when there's something that hasn't been mentioned. And there are a few things I do want to talk about that uh, either got overlooked or uh, just haven't been talked about a lot. Before I do that, though, I, I first feel it's probably important for you to know where I stand, uh, what I think of the original Resident Evil 3, what that game actually means to me, and... It means a lot, actually. Um, the fandom, the fan base of Resident Evil is often divided. Um, even by us old school fans um, from like the fixed camera era, the classic Resident Evil games we call them, and then everything starting with Resident Evil 4 and after with the over the shoulder perspective. And I think that's, uh, that's the way you gotta kinda classify them. Because, you know, when, when someone asks me, you know, at the age I am, what my favorite Resident Evil game is, I usually have to divide it between, like, the modern Resident Evil games or the classic Resident Evil games. And of the classic Resident Evil games, you know, the fixed camera angles, the 3D or fully rendered or mostly 2D pre-rendered backgrounds, um, Resident Evil 3 is, oof, I always want to say it's my favorite. But I know kind of in my heart that Resident Evil 2, because of all the content it offered, you know, the two separate discs with the player and the A and B scenarios and just the replayability there, uh, which Resident Evil 3 did have that as well, uh, but more on that later. Um, I, I know in my heart with all the content that Resident Evil 2 offered, I, I probably would have to say Resident Evil 2 was the best of the classic games, however... It ain't by much. Resident Evil 3 was badass, okay? I, I loved Resident Evil 3. There were things in that game that, for whatever reason, Capcom did not revisit. Um, things like the dodge feature, um, the crafting your own ammo and shit. I mean, yeah, we got some of that later in the modern games, but you didn't see that much. You didn't see that, say, in, like, Code Veronica or... or you just didn't see that again, especially not the dodge. The dodge was the shit. I love the dodge. I wish it had come back. Maybe it was kind of OP. Um, a lot of people didn't know how to dodge properly, so they felt like it was useless. But those of us who mastered that dodge were like, oh man, the dodge was awesome. It was also the first of the classic games to let you just go upstairs without having to like press X first. Um, even Code Veronica didn't even have that. It was also the first game to implement the uh, 180 degree turnaround, which was very handy, because um, you didn't even have that in Resident Evil 2, which is widely claimed to be the uh, the best of the classic games. But 
Resident Evil 3 also had the live selection thing, sort of the choose your own adventure, uh, branching paths. Um, it also introduced what was called like non-linear item placement, meaning you know you and a friend could be playing the game and you will find a handgun bullets here in this you know corner of the room, but your friend who was also playing the game in that exact same spot you found those handgun bullets might find like an herb. So you know there was a system in place to where all the items were just differently and that and that also created uh, yeah that was part that part that was part of what went into the replayability but you also you know don't forget there was the gunpowder a b and c so sometimes you might find uh lots of gunpowder early on and be able to craft your own ammo and you may be stocked but maybe you don't have much health items you know it worked though it was a great game they, they took a lot of risk it was very bold um there wouldn't be another like fixed camera Resident Evil to take as many risks until Resident Evil Outbreak, which don't get me started. Uh, I love Resident Evil Outbreak also, but it was also the only other game to not play it safe and actually do some bold things with uh, with the base, you know, the combat and and just the overall engine. And speaking of Outbreak, uh, I, as I recall, when the first I think it was a leaked screenshot of uh, some of the protagonists from uh, Project Resistance were leaked. A lot of us were like, is this going to be like a uh, remake of Outbreak or continuation? What's it going to be? Um, a lot of people were um, mostly disappointed to learn that it was sort of a, what they call an asymmetrical um, survival sort of game, kind of like uh, Friday the 13th or, uh, you know, Dead by Daylight, those kind of games. Um, I was cool with it, I just, you know, there was a part of me that, and I should have made a video back then, but there was a part of me that didn't believe that it was going to be, you know, just that. Uh, like, I'll be honest, I kind of thought it was a mode that they were uh, they were showing us, and then... At some point, they were going to reveal that it was a new Resident Evil 2 DLC. Honestly, I thought it was going to be like Resident Evil 2 DLC. Because, uh, remember, at the time, the information we had, there was that, uh, that new achievement that the new trophy for Resident Evil 2 had been discovered, and a lot of us were speculating on that. Um, I kind of wondered if it was related, but... Uh, no, it was very smart what Capcom did. They uh, they kind of pulled the wool over everyone's eyes. Everyone thought it's going to be its own separate game. And then, lo and behold, it's actually the online multiplayer component of Resident Evil 3. So, damn, Capcom. You guys are killing it lately. Shit. My God. But, uh, back to Resident Evil 3 itself. Um, because the stuff like the dodge and... and just, you know, the custom weapon parts you find by dropping an emphasis and all of that was never revisited. I kind of hoped, and, and we'd heard there was there had been a leak that Capcom was, in fact, working on Resident Evil 3, but the information we had was that it was being developed by a third party, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. A lot of people hear that and they're just like, well, that fucking sucks. It's going to suck. Um... I know it was, I'm in the minority here, but I did kind of hope that it was going to be um, released shortly after Resident Evil 2, but it was going to be like a fixed camera angle. I know, I'm a dinosaur. Call me old-fashioned. Uh, it's not, but that... Not all my hopes were dashed. Um, look how quickly we're getting Resident Evil 3 after we... Got Resident Evil 2. I mean, we already have a fucking release date, you guys. I mean, April 2020? Shit. You, it's funny now to think of the total darkness they kept us in about the Resident Evil 2 remake and um, all the complaints we had, I, I, myself included, on the total silence and lack of transparency and just leaving us in the dark. And then... it. I don't know. If you had told me last year that... Before I'd gotten the Resident Evil 2, you know, at E3, so like last year in maybe February, that not only would we be getting the Resident Evil 2 remake, 
but the same year. Um, not only would we be getting it, you know, next year, but the same year we'd get news that they were remaking Resident Evil 3, I'd have been like, no, nope, that's fucking bull. Like, if that had leaked, if that had been, like, leaked information, nobody would have believed it. I wouldn't have believed it. You wouldn't have believed it. We'd have just been like, yeah, that's that's fucking bullshit. They'd never do that. Capcom's not that cool. Um, I maintain that they are, and I'm, I'm glad to be a little vindicated here lately uh, with all the things Capcom has been doing correctly. Um, that being said, I still haven't given you my Resident Evil 2 sort of review video, and I'll probably give you that uh, right after Christmas, similar to uh, my Resident Evil 7 review video. Uh, I don't anticipate um, my Resident Evil 2 video to be nearly as long as Resident Evil 7, um, because that was a game I enjoyed, but I took apart because it was a very flawed game, and I wanted to give everyone a fair sort of assessment of Resident Evil 7 as an entire package and what it offered, what it did right, what it did wrong, and uh, if you want an example of a good, honest, balanced review, um, you should watch that if, you, if you've got like an hour to kill. My Resident Evil 7 video, the, the biggest flaws of Resident Evil 7, because I tear that game apart and I, and I enjoyed that game, but um, I think it's important to be honest when there are things you don't like about a game. Even if you're rooting for its success, even if you're rooting for the success of the franchise it belongs to, to be honest about what you didn't like, because if you're not, if you're showing the whole time, Capcom doesn't know what you didn't like, because you didn't tell them, and they we could end up with uh, sort of what a lot of people criticize Resident Evil 4 after Resident Evil 4. Um, they, they saw the success of Resident Evil 4 and they thought they meant that that meant that the fans liked all the action so they amped it up in Resident Evil 5 Resident Evil 5 did extremely well because they were it it was on the back of Resident Evil 4 and then they kept going action-packed and then they realized after Resident Evil 6 that we actually liked horror and wanted more horror back um, and that was a risk that they took but they did take it and that was one of the things that I defended Resident Evil 7 about was they wanted to take it back to horror because we the fans wanted it even though sales would suggest if they were only looking at sales that that more action was the way to go the main reason I didn't put out a Resident Evil 2 review video already is because it, I'm definitely in the minority on this one but I think a lot of you will agree with me after you hear me say it I don't I don't like the idea of reviewing something right after you've consumed it. You know, movie, video games, especially video games. Especially video games, because I feel like you don't always know right away what a video game means to you until later on, until much later on. You, you, you don't always know how a video game makes you feel until it's been with you for a while. I mean, so a lot of these reviews, well, most reviews come out, you know, when the game is fresh and it's fresh in their minds and it's all they've been playing for the last several hours. And and I feel like that influences, it either contributes to bias, either for or against the game, or it, 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 it influences their perception of the game, or their perspective of the game. I know some of you have played games that you didn't maybe like at the time, but when you look back on, you're like, you know, that game wasn't that bad. That game was actually kind of cool. You, some, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. That, that's why I'm, I, I don't like the idea of, ga of companies giving, like, review copies of games. Yeah, part of it's because, you know, where's my review copy? But, um, I still don't think that I would... I could do it because a you're on sort of a deadline you got to it forces you to play a game maybe you were looking at some other games you wanted to play first and then the company sends you a review, a review copy and you're just like okay well I got to play this or this or that because again you know when it's brand new it's all you're thinking about you know sometimes it takes almost a full year later for you to realize you know that game kind of sucked ass or that game was fucking awesome now, luckily for Resident Evil 2, um, I, I probably could have done a review video right afterward because my perspective on it hasn't changed very much. I loved it. It was great. However, 
what I feared would happen did sort of happen. What I mean by that is when you do a from the ground up remake, completely new engine, completely new everything, things get it inevitably fall by the wayside. Okay. Um, I highly recommend the Resident Evil 2 remake. It's great, but those of you who played the original, like myself, know that it was missing certain things. And I won't get into that on this video, but I will mention that in my next video. This video is about Resident Evil 3, and how fucking hyped I am to see that it's also getting a remake. And I can tell you also, as someone who's played the original versions of Resident Evil 2 and 3, that Resident Evil 3 should actually be a lot easier to translate into a full-on remake. There were factors involved in Resident Evil 2 that sort of made it more difficult, like the A and B scenarios and things like that. So while that isn't necessarily a factor with Resident Evil 3, even in that game, there were branching paths depending on the choices you make. Not, not so much, um, you know, it wasn't like, you know, Mass Effect where a choice you made could have repercussions for the entire rest of the game or, or anything like that, but depending on when you arrived at a certain part, you know, you could run into different people things like that. Um, it was a very unique game. It'll be interesting to see because we, we don't know yet. They haven't told us. If Capcom intends to reproduce those sort of elements of Resident Evil 3. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because there's just a lot we don't know. We, even though they've given us a smorgasbord compared to what they had given us after they announced the Resident Evil 2 remake. Um, there are still there are questions that diehard fans who played the original, you know, have about this new remake. You know, things like the dodge feature. It looks like there is going to be one somehow, maybe. I don't know if it's going to be like, you know, Evil Within 2 or it's just like a random chance RNG sort of thing. I hope not. Um, or a manual dodge like in Resident Evil Revelations 2. Honestly, I hope... I hope it's more like the Resident Evil Revelations 1 dodge, a very sort of timing-based dodge, but that with invincibility frames, because one problem with the original dodge in Resident Evil 3 was you weren't necessarily invincible. It was super useful. I mean, you could, you could knife the nemesis to death if you had the dodge technique down. Um, yeah, you had to have nerves of steel to do it, because it took a lot of stabs. But... Um, the dodge made the knife useful. It did more damage, it seemed like. Um, I never did look into if it actually did do more damage compared to the damage it did in previous games, but it, it was pretty awesome. Uh, dogs were super easy to dodge if you had the timing right. Just, you know, sort of aim at them, and then when they leapt at you, you could just dodge out of the way. Um, zombies, ironically, were the hardest enemies to dodge because they came at you with like less than a second frame um, and it was sort of easier to dodge them if you turned around turned your back toward them first and then like when Jill when you press R1 and Jill was about to spin around if her arm sort of came into contact with the zombie she would just automatically go into the dodge animation and that would end up pushing the zombie which was super useful um, they were useful against the hunters because there are hunters in that game um, but most importantly of all the dodge was important to have in a game that features the nemesis because if you guys thought that Mr. X was a pain in the ass oh shit I mean the nemesis could outrun you number one uh, number two I don't know about you but the game being over the shoulder uh, you know, the Resident Evil 2 remake made Mr. X even worse of a pain in the ass in, in many respects. Um, if, if he put you in a corner, you... Ugh. Ugly. And the nemesis doing that? Oh, shit. Having, like, a Resident Evil Revelations 1 style dodge in the Resident Evil 2 remake would have been... Really nice to have in those moments when, you know, your back was against the wall and Mr. X was heading right toward you. So in Resident Evil 3, I really do hope, because even in the original game, that was one sort of 
comfort. I mean, it was up to you to dodge correctly and with proper timing. They didn't want to make it too easy. But uh, there were little things you could use to your advantage, like knowing that the nemesis was actually left-handed. And so when he was going to punch, he would do it with his left hand. Um, if he was going to grab, he would do it with his uh, left hand also. So you you could run past his right side, which was like the part where his jacket was torn to pieces and his, it was like his arm was sort of exposed. You could run past that side safely because he was left-handed. He wasn't going to—he wasn't going to like not clothesline your ass as you as you ran by, as opposed to if you ran by his other side. So there were things like that. Um, another thing we also know about the Resident Evil Three remake is, unfortunately, they are not going with the one true Jill Valentine, which would be the lovely Julia Voth. Yeah like to be the master of her log, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, um, which sucks, because Julie Voth clearly loves being Jill Valentine, okay? She seems to have a lot of fun with the character. I even, because I follow her on Instagram, I even um, made a comment to her recently, okay? Like, before they even announced the Resident Evil 3 remake, Actually, it was right before they announced it. Um, I pointed out, you know, with the Resident Evil RE engine, they could easily get her to truly be Jill. She could be the face, like always. Um, she could do the mocap, because she's still in shape. Um, and because she's an actor, an actress, she, she could actually act out the part, too. I mean, the full-body performance she could offer and I pointed out I hope Capcom realizes that um, I mean fuck even even her initials are the same and uh, lo and behold she actually liked my comment Julia Voth did so yeah you know we're, we're like friends now uh, yeah so Julia if you're watching you know, love you babe no she's not watching anyway um, so, and it's not too late for Capcom to do it. I mean, it, it really doesn't bother me that much that Jill in, in the new Resident Evil 3 is not is not Julia Voth because she's not that young anymore. Although, there is a part of me that, you know, when they decided to go back and remake Resident Evil 2 so many years after they remade Resident Evil 1, there was the possibility of... Well, there wasn't, necessarily the possibility of a continuity error because the, the with the starting with the first remake and then Resident Evil Zero that's when we got the an update in the look of Chris and Jill I mean it, it wasn't I mean, they didn't they were the same but different but that's when they gave us realistic faces um, so Matt Mullins was Chris Julia Voth was Jill and they used both of those models as a template for how they looked for basically subsequent games until you know we got red fake over here but yeah I have my own theories about that um, but if they were to remake Resident Evil 3 which we all wanted after they announced Resident Evil 2 we knew that if they didn't go with Julia Both it was gonna it was going to uh, break sort of the continuity of the established canon because these are the, you know, just like the original remake of Resident Evil 1, um, new canon was set down. New things uh, that happened differently, that was what happened officially now. And so by getting new face models, I know it's not, you know, giant, a giant issue in, in the overall scheme of things, but by getting a different face model, you, you kind of change that a little bit. Um, ironically, Julia Voth, I mean, she's aged well if anything I think she's even hotter now than she was when she was Jill in 2000 what two 2001 around there um, she was like 19 when they hired her to be Jill in in the remake but um, she's even hotter now I mean like it wouldn't have been a big deal and everyone would have loved it but it's not too late for them to get Julia Voth in subsequent games like I said she is an actress you want to see what she can do? Uh, she did do a, like a web series several years ago, I think for IGN. 
IGN. It was called like Project Sarah. Sarah S E R A. Look it up. They're pretty short. Um, she actually really did a good job. I could totally see her being Jill Valentine. Um, they could use her voice and everything. It fits. Matt Mullins is sort of a stuntman actor. Um, but his fighting style is a little bit, uh, a little bit more Jean Claude Van Damme, Johnny Cage style, uh, as opposed to Chris's, you know, beat the fuck out of boulders with fists. Um, and I don't think his voice is right for Chris. But Julia Voth would be great. I mean, because they haven't had a consistent Jill Valentine voice actress really ever. It's, I'm not even upset like I initially was that Allison Court wasn't going to be Claire. I, Catherine Disher was the original Jill Valentine in Resident Evil 3 and she's probably best known as you know Jean Grey in the old X-Men cartoon but I never thought even back then that she was necessarily right for the part of Jill Valentine. Um, but you know I, I just rejoiced even back then that they did have some better voice actors. Um, but, yeah, like, if you see what Julia Vaughn can do as an actress, she, she actually, I mean, it would, Capcom would save, I think, money by hiring her and using her in future games, like in Resident Evil 8, for example. I mean, overall, I everything I've seen of the Resident Evil 3 may remake, I, I like, I, I like the new face model. She's not Julia Voth, but, you know, unlike Red Fake, she still has that Jill look. Um, I like how Carlos looks. I, I, Avid Expert called it. it. He said he looked exactly like Miguel from Tekken. And yeah, he does. He totally does. Uh, but I think that works for him. I, I never... The character of Carlos was... I always liked the guy, but I always thought he was too much of a pretty boy. To be, you know, a hardened umbrella merc. And his new look is just tougher, meaner looking... And, and I like that, you know, alpha male, umbrella, UBCS, mercenary, I mean, he looks the part now, I like that, of course, I, Mikhail and Nikolai all look, every, everybody looks great, even the nemesis weird fucking nose, I think, creepier is better, um, might take a little getting used to, but it, it was hard to tell until you saw, like, a side profile of nemesis that he had that nose, but, Everything looks fucking cool. Everybody sounds great. Um, fucking Nikolai. We don't need some bleeding heart like you getting in the way. You stupid bitch. Should have had me be Nikolai Capcom. Should have hired me. I would have given him an edge. Nikolai was, was also probably one of the most underrated by some villains in the Resident Evil franchise. Um... I mean, he wasn't the, the mastermind that Wesker was, but he just was kind of an asshole and an accomplished mercenary. And Everyone who played Resident Evil 3 kind of remembers Nikolai being that guy. A lot of people have a fondness for Nikolai that only comes from, you know, great villainy. But, yeah, it, it looks great. It sounds great. Um... You know, everybody was focused on some of the screenshots, mainly the screenshot of Jill standing behind Robert Kendo. Everybody was talking about that one, but I, I, I was going through the screenshots in you know when on the pre-order page, and I noticed one that was very interesting. Interspersed between screenshots of Resident Evil 3 were also Project Resist Resistance screenshots and I found this one to be interesting because it name drops Alex Wesker. Not Albert Wesker. Alex Wesker. Now, for those of you who don't know, surely most of you do, it, the concept of the Wesker children was first explained in Resident Evil 5 and Wesker's flashback uh, with Oswell E. Spencer telling him that he was uh, one of many children with the surname Wesker that uh, were going to lead the world into a future of intellectual and, you know, just superhuman superiority and only two 
of the like 13 children survived. Uh, Oswell tells Albert Wesker that he was the only one, but we now know that there were at least two survivors, the other being his sister Alex. And uh, we don't actually get to meet Alex Wesker until Resident Evil Revelations 2, but that wasn't actually the first time she was mentioned. The first time she was mentioned was actually in the Lost in Nightmares DLC of Resident Evil 5, where you find a file and uh, it explicitly mentions the name Alex. doesn't say Alex Wesker, but when you read that file now, it's, it's clear that that's who Spencer was talking about. It doesn't even... It takes careful pains not to even mention the gender of this Alex person. But Spencer is obviously placing a lot of hope um, into this person, Alex. And it, it even mentions sort of the island that she runs in Revelations 2, uh, which was fucking cool. But, um, yeah, it, it mentions that Alex Wesker recruits, you know, Annette Birkin, which is interesting. Um... Because William Birkin is was sort of like Wesker's rival, his you know main the Moriarty to his Sherlock Holmes. I mean, not really because they're both villains, but I mean, you know what I mean. Like that was he was his chief rival scientist, umbrella employee, and we learned so much more from Revelations too. Which if you haven't played that game, go ahead and play it. Um, Depending on the ending you get, it's it's clear that uh, Alex Wesker is not down for the count. Although you do fight her, I mean, you don't. You know, it, it seems like you've killed her, but it's it also seems like depending on the ending, she could make a return in the future. So I don't know if Project Resistance is going to be uh, taking place during the events of Resident Evil Two and Three, or if it's you know another city, an isolated incident, but that that's just something to think about, and it's something that I noticed a lot of people didn't notice. Um, of course, it's entirely possible that uh, what I saw there in that screenshot is a, uh, you know, a typo, and they meant to put Albert Wesker, but it does say Alex Wesker, and Alex Wesker is another character entirely, so I thought I would point that out. Either way, I am super hyped for Resident Evil 3. I hope you guys are too. I hope you like this video. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all those things. I'm not going anywhere. I know YouTube's crapping, cracking down on everybody, but uh, fuck them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down with this ship if I have to. Um, so yeah, be back here for some more high testosterone alpha male content. Hope to see you guys again soon. Take it easy.